In the first paper I wrote on the atom being a black hole, I called it the Schwarzschild proton, the nuclei of the atom. Schwarzschild is the man that solved Einstein's equation and showed that Einstein's equation predicts the formation of black holes. Um, I considered the nuclei of the atom. I thought if, if the atom is a black hole, the nuclei must be where it's at, you know? And so the little proton, uh, and I, I looked at the little proton and I said, well, what about the amount of energy in terms of vacuum energy inside that proton? And, you know, it, it, was, it was never considered. Now, you can think of this energy as little sets of information. You can think of, like, every Planck being a little bit of information, you know, just like a computer, a one or a zero. It's a little more complex than that, but along those lines. So I said, okay, well, how much information, how much little Planck's, can I stick inside the little proton? I mean, the proton is already really small. The volume of a proton is like in the order of 10 to the minus 39 centimeters. It's a, a, a cube. It's a, it's a very, very teeny volume. But the Planck is so small that if you calculate how many Planck's there is in there, you get 10 to the 55 grams, which is the mass of the universe. So consider that. Consider that all the Planck's inside a proton is a little bit of, each Planck is a little bit of information, and that all the Planck's together inside the proton actually has the information of all the other protons in the universe. All right? So that every one of your protons has all the information of all other protons in the universe so that it can absolutely self-organize and feed back information to the whole. <laughs> Isn't that cool? The World Congress of Quantum Medicine 2014 featured renowned quantum physicists and doctors and confirm new graduates who will make a difference in the world's healthcare. <laughs>